This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. So we've got a Charleston reach in here. It's not working right. Fan motor's running. I hear a funny sound though. So we're gonna get this cover pulled off and then we'll get that back cover pulled off and we'll see what we So I got behind it. What's fan motor's running? Pretty sure we either got a bad compressor or bad starting components because I'll let you hear the sound right now from the hangs. Hear that? So I'm gonna pull it apart and check the starting components first. Cover off, power disconnected. We pull this apart and then we'll disconnect the two wires going to my start capacitor and pull the start capacitor off and check. So the overload just reset. I don't know if you guys heard that. And we'll take the overload off and home out the compressor terminals too. It's kind of within range. It's supposed to be 189 to 227. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, I don't see any damage to the overload, but I'll temporarily grab a 3 in 1 and see if we can get the compressor to start. If we can't, then we'll have to replace the compressor. So I'm not typically a fan of 3 in 1 start kits, but I will use them to test to see if I can get the compressor running temporarily and then get the factory starting components if it works. In this situation, it's easier for me to grab one of these instead of a compressor analyzer. This compressor analyzer can be big and cumbersome. That thing's cheap and small, throw it on, jump it, you know? So we're just gonna wire it in real quick and then uh, fire this guy up. But like I said, I tested these, uh, these posts right now and they all ohm out to be pretty decent so they pretty much two of them add up to the third one pretty much so nope compressor's locked up won't start so it's done it's a new compressor on this one We've got 120 going to the compressor and it won't start. The next thing we need to do, we can't just assume it's a bad compressor. This is a sealed system, so we have to put service ports on this so we can see if it even has any refrigerant in it. It might be completely flat, no pressure controls or anything, so we'll check that. I obviously need to still figure out the flow in my van because I end up with this pile of stuff right here, even though I have all the room, so I'm going to have to figure something better out. Like I, you know, when I posted my video, I said it's not complete, so we'll still figure it out. But I just find myself being lazy and putting stuff here when you open the door. Um, what I came out here for is a um, quick access valve. They're not up there, then I put them over here. I'm still trying to figure out where I put everything too, so it must be over there. Cool. So we have standing pressure, so that's a plus. So we'll go ahead and close this down. And then when we change the compressor, we'll get rid of this and put access fittings right there. So I only use these just to do a quick test. And I don't even need to put on the high side because if you've got pressure in this, there's no valves or anything. So, and it's not running, so there's nothing else I can do. And I'll make sure that, you know, in my quote, I tell them there's no way of knowing what caused it to go bad so that way we can diagnose when we get here. So, cool. So I will tell you that we are gonna change the hot gas condensate heater also. Um, even though the system still has refrigerant, those are notorious for leaking. So we're gonna change that when we have the compressor out. Just out of precaution, it's a real simple, easy fix when you've got the compressor out. Also, I am not a fan of these Alco Emerson expansion valves been nothing but problems for me so we might change that to go ahead and order that with the compressor we have no idea what caused this compressor to go bad and we know it's not out of gas so yeah we're probably gonna have to change that bad boy out all right this one was a reach in cooler that wasn't working properly and when i arrived you saw the box was in the 70s and the compressor was not running okay you can do a lot before you actually put your your gauges or your meter to the system just by using your senses and you know even though it was loud in the restaurant i could hear the the distinct sound of the compressor trying to start um, and just internally being locked up and then going off on internal overload so i kind of already had a hunch before i got started but 
still went through all the troubleshooting steps of testing the starting components, um, you know, testing the continuity of the windings in the compressor, and then inevitably uh, deciding that the compressor was bad by putting on a temporary three-in-one start kit. So um, found that the unit uh, had refrigerant in it, obviously. Okay, so that was a good sign. And then you saw the way that I go through troubleshooting steps by um, looking at, you know, just, just evaluating everything and saying, okay, what caused this compressor to go bad? What could potentially cause the compressor to go bad? Uh, the Emerson expansion valves, I tend to see a lot of problems with and wanted to go ahead and replace that because we had refrigerant, we had good starting components. So what else in that system could have caused that compressor to go bad? It could have just been a fluke or it could have been an expansion valve maybe that was flooding back to the compressor and ruined the valves. Who knows, okay? And unfortunately, we're never gonna know because once I gave the customer the list of problems and gave them a quote, they decided to go ahead and replace the entire reach in versus repairing it. So I had no, um, no resolution on that one. Okay. We just, you know, gave them everything we, we knew what was going on and they made the decision to go ahead and replace it. So, um, I want to say thank you guys so very much for taking the time to watch these videos. I say it all the time, but I really do truly mean it. Okay. I really appreciate your guys's feedback. Um, and whether it be negative or positive feedback, I really appreciate it all because the negative helps me to grow, helps me to change the way that I do things. I don't know everything. Some of you guys know more than I do. So some of you guys give me tips like, Hey, you should have done it like this. And I, and I really appreciate that stuff. So please continue to give me your feedback, good or bad. Let me know what you guys think. Okay. And other than that, we will see you guys on the next one.